Hi everyone, this is Jonathan from Shooting Stuff. Today we're here to answer more of our frequently asked questions. The topic for today is what should a new gun owner know when buying a gun? We're going to look at three different aspects. The legal process to obtain a license, how to select a firearm, and the training and where can I shoot that follows getting your gun. Okay, so you have decided you need a firearm. There are many questions that you need to answer before you actually take that step of buying your first gun. There's a couple of legal issues that we need to cover, and then there's a choice of the gun itself. What do you need to use it for? What do you want it for? And then we'll even talk a little bit about what comes after um, training and where you can shoot it. The legal process is remarkably simple, but time consuming, and sometimes feels a little complicated. It starts off with the prescribed training. This training is prescribed in the Firearms Control Act and you need to go and visit an accredited training provider in your area and that's someone who's accredited with the PFTC or the Professional Firearms Training Council. Through them, you will complete the necessary unit standards. What are unit standards? These are basically the training programs, the course if you like, uh, that covers a number of different aspects. Everybody needs to be familiar with the law and that's unit standard number one. If your desire is to buy a handgun such as for self-defense or sport shooting you'll need to do the unit standard for handguns. There are also unit standards for rifles such as hunting rifles or shotguns whether it's a pump action, a bird shooting gun um, and the final one is for a self-loading rifle. Uh, a little bit different to all the others. There's an advantage if you do all the training and all the certification up front, mainly in terms of time and a little bit of a cost saving. So really give that some thought when you're making your decisions. Once you've successfully completed your training, the training provider will give you a proficiency certificate. You'll take that proficiency certificate and apply to the police by completing the necessary forms to apply for a competency certificate. The police will do a background check as part of the competency certification process. And that's a process that takes about 90 working days, during which time they're checking to see if you are suitable to possess a firearm. It really goes about your character and you need to convince them that you're a good person with no criminal records or no uh, inapplicable or, or bad criminal records that uh, would disqualify you from, from, from owning a firearm. Once you have your competency certificate good or during this process, have a look around for this particular firearm and buy it. You can't have it yet, but at least it gives you the opportunity to secure a good deal. With your competency certificate in hand and you must be in possession of it, you then apply to the police for a license to possess the specific firearm that you've selected. It's another process that takes about 90 days. So from when you decide to start uh, that you need a firearm until you actually get it, you can expect a better part of six to eight months. Uh, it's quite a long process. So how do you select your firearm? Well, it all depends on what you want to do. Your requirements for self-defense um, would be quite different from somebody who wants to go and shoot some bulltong uh, or shoot an animal to make some biltong and the Firearm Control Act uh, allows licensing in a number of different categories. The first one just listed that way in the, in the Act is for self-defense. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the specific requirements for self-defense later as we zoom in a little bit because that remains probably the most popular place for people to start with a firearm license. Firearms Control Act or FCA also allows for occasional sport shooting or occasional hunting. Quite different firearms applicable for those and when you get a bit more serious the act goes further to allow for dedicated uh, shooting 
in the hunting or the sport shooting categories. The final one available to most of us is to collect firearms for various uh, historical heritage purposes, technology purposes and so on. And that's a whole theme for another video later. Since self-defense is the most popular, we'll start off by looking at that today. Firearms Control Act permits two types of firearms for self-defense. The first is a handgun that is not automatic. And the second is a shotgun that is not semi-automatic or fully automatic. When you're selecting your firearm, I believe that the overriding consideration is to select something that is reliable. Your gun must do what it needs to do every single time you need it to do that. For self-defense, as you can see from what the FCA allows, you need to think primarily, are you looking for something to carry with you daily on the street, or is it something primarily for home defense? And that will guide you in the handgun side or the shotgun side, possibly. I think we can all agree that the shotgun, a big long gun, is not really something that you're going to carry with you daily on the street, but it can be a very effective tool for protecting you and your loved ones at home. I want to talk a little bit about some of the considerations you should follow when selecting a handgun. And as I said earlier, reliability is the primary constraint or consideration. Anything that is not reliable is likely to let you down in the heat of the moment when you really need really, really. it. Whether that's a hunting rifle or trying to break a clay on the range or protecting your life against a violent attacker, make sure you have a reliable firearm. You need to select the caliber and in the self-defense def scenario, you want something with sufficient power to protect you, to stop the attack, but at the same time, especially if you're a smaller person, something without too much recoil. And we found that the 9mm or 9mm Luger, 9mm Parabellum, comes up with many names, is arguably the best all-rounder for that purpose. As far as size is concerned, bigger is more comfortable to shoot and smaller is going to carry easier, especially concealed. The trade-off is very much of a personal thing and you need to decide on what balance of concealed carry, for example, versus shooting on the range, you're going to do with this firearm. The Firearms Control Act and legislation currently allows you to have more than one, so you do not have to find one solution to last you forever in a day. Uh, you can always have more than one firearm. I firmly believe that support for the firearm that you choose is extremely important. And the reason for that is things go wrong. It doesn't matter the quality, things break. And if you cannot get spare parts, or even worse, if you lose a magazine and you need another one and you cannot get it in South Africa, you end up with something that is essentially worthless. More than worthless is it's on a license and the whole licensing process to replace it is extremely time consuming. So make sure you choose wisely and you select a firearm that has good support in South Africa. Looks and budget and the ability to accessorize, they're nice to have and really that's where your person, personal choice comes in, but they are the final considerations at the end of the day. So to wrap up, Please remember that your proficiency training is just a start. It's like grade one. You're not yet qualified and find yourself some training afterwards. Join a shooting club, participate, become familiar. Handling your firearm safely should become second nature. We found that the best way is to find a local shooting range, um, especially a sport shooting club, and join the club and participate. There's many hunting associations. If your forte uh, is, is uh, for, for a hunting rifle, for example, and there's many different types of sport shooting clubs. 
Coming back to our self-defense scenario that we've just discussed, sports like IPSC, IDPA, Three Gun Nation lead to excellence. And, and what I mean by that is they will all teach you the skills and familiarity to be a safe and proficient firearms handler that can shoot fast and accurate. Remember to please subscribe and hit the like button below if you enjoyed this video. We'll continue to bring you more good stuff. And that's me, Jonathan, for shooting stuff, giving you more time to shoot.